Dancing with the Stars gave you a profile and you started your own dance school, Phoenix Dance School. Yeah, Phoenix Dance. Tell me about that. We did, after the show, um, it was like being able to drop a leaflet into everyone's home. That's how I kind of liken it. And, um, and so it's, it's enabled me to make dance my career and my living, which I'm, I feel very lucky to do. You know, it's been something that really helped me growing up in life. It's helped so many um, facets of my life. Um, and now being able to do this with others and pass it on is, is really cool. Yeah. And you um, teach in schools? I do. Yeah, I go into schools. Um, I teach some competition kids. Um, I think my youngest student has been five and my oldest has been in her 90s. So, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's such a, a wide spectrum. I just, I think, you know, d separate from the fact that I've, I dance for a living, yes. like I'm glad that it's something I've learned. I just think it's such a life skill, yeah. being able to share yeah. dance with I, another I'm going to say something now, though. You get professional boring dancers mm -hmm. They can't all teach. No. There's a real yeah. gift there that Thank you have. You. Yeah. And it's about people feeling vulnerable mm. when they come to you, yep. and you just make them feel so safe and ease, okay. and you bring the fun element yeah. in. Yeah. They joy. Absolutely. Well, what I what I love is that I'm not shaped what's what by what someone thinks they can and can't do. You know, that's everyone for whatever reason has this kind. Sometimes can have a limitation or what they believe they can do. Whereas, I'm, in a nice way, I'm not affected by that. So I I can almost guarantee that the picture I have in my head of them dancing and what they had, and I reckon my picture's always flashier yeah. because it's, and nice. now my job is just to try and get them to get to that and realise they can. Beautiful. Mm. Um, I. I love dance, and I've continued dancing. Mm -hmm. I do Argentinian tango. Wait, this way. Yeah, and I dance every week. And there's so many benefits of dancing. Yes. You know, for me, I dance because it keeps me fit. Mm -hmm. It helps me with stress. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of health benefits, mental benefits of yes. dancing. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's what I love. Dance covers almost every base. It's it's the emotional, it's the mental, it's the physical. Um, in some cases, it's a spiritual pursuit for people as well. But the health benefits are almost. You know, you, there's so many you can't you can't name them all. Not only the brain health, the emotional health, increasing balance, um, helping people as they age with yeah. so many you know positivities as well. You know, you've got studies now that you know if you if you look at the minds of people aging yes. that get involved in dance, it almost brings them back to the mind of a teen brain. Wow, it's, yeah, yeah, it's stunning. Yeah, it's no, stunning. I've seen that research as well where mm. they've tr tried like eleven different types of exercises: yeah. golf, tennis horse riding, but yeah. dance is the one for mental health, yeah. number one. Number one. So, yeah. And, you know, when you dance, mm. doesn't matter how, how good you are, mm -hmm. just dancing, moving, yeah. you feel good. Absolutely. You get that happy uh, hormone, yeah, serotonin, and serotonin, serotonin yeah. pumping through, mm -hmm. and you feel alive. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel alive. Yeah. And I think that's a great description. You feel alive. It's one of those things that you truly, you know, feel like you're present in the moment and moving. And there's such such good emotion attached to it as well. So everything's released and everything feels like it's doing something rather than perhaps, you know, some of the other activities that are a little bit more squashing, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm. The other reason that I love it, you know, I'm mm. a single woman mm. and it's a way of going and doing something social, going to a tango milonga, mm. meeting people. I don't have to have a partner. It's, I don't think you'd have problems with getting partners. <laughs> it's connecting me to people. Yes. And we need to be connected. Yeah, I think that's, a, and it's a great way of bringing people together. Yeah, absolutely, Social. Absolutely. And you're bringing people in such a respectful way as well. Yeah. You know, that's what I love. I love that I learned yes. at a young age yes. because I learned such good respectful boundaries. You know, generations ago, that was how they met. Yes. You know, and then now, you know, well, not now, but it's starting to get more so that dance is yeah. part of it. I think oh, Dancing well. with the Stars has yeah. really yeah. brought a highlight to dancing again and, and got people, I mean, you would have seen it in your dance school, people yeah, coming. Absolutely. Well, I think because it took, you know, the show took real people and took them through a real journey. Yeah. You know, they were paired up with a pro, yeah. but, the, but the, yeah. the levels were all over the place. Yes, and yeah. to see where people could get to over that time, I think people go, oh, I'd quite like to do that. So Dancing with the Stars has mm. given you a profile. Mm. And I recently saw on Sunday TV mm. a program about sexual abuse mm -hmm. with teenagers yeah. and this is an experience you have been through mm, absolutely and you decided to share your story yeah I did what made you do that um 
I think people that have perhaps been through the same experience, I wanted to be able to show them that it wasn't an end to their life and also really that they're not alone because when someone's gone through abuse, it's very, very easy to feel that way. You know, there's just, there's all those unfortunately cliche words of, of you know, the, it brings the feeling of shame and all these kind of things, but it's true. You know, people do feel all the shame, this guilt and self-blame and that keeps people quiet. Um, and not only does it not help people then deal with and get through their experiences, it also kind of on some ways allows it to keep going for others in the future. And so I wanted to be able to bring some attention to it, first of all, but also for people to see they're not alone um, and that life can get better and life can be rich and can be full and can be full of love and can be free. For example of this. Yeah. It can be, you can be free of those things that, are hold, that, that just weigh you down. Um, and to encourage people to, to see that and perhaps give those feelings back to where they belong, really with the person, the perpetrator yeah. that, that did it to them and see, you know, there is a, a path forwards. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I thought by doing this, yeah, people could see that they weren't alone yeah. and, and that you can have a, a stronger, healthier, happier life. So, yeah. And so if there's anybody that is watching this now yeah. who is being sexually abused, mm -hmm. what advice have you got for them? Talk. Talk. talk, yeah, talk. It's it's the hardest thing. It must be frightening. Oh, you it's know, like terrifying to actually verbally just yeah. share that with yeah. someone, oh. with the worry, uh -huh. and it must happen uh -huh. that you're not going to be believed. A hundred percent, and and not only while the abuse is going on, because there's some people that want to talk while it's going on, and there's for others it's well down the track when they're like, how can I actually well, talk about this? You talked about it and shared it mm. a long time a long after. Time. Yeah, so for me, it went, it went through a lot of my childhood. And and I knew I wanted to talk to someone, and it almost felt a bit like a Dutch oven, you know, the pressure cooker. Like Things were building up and building up. But for me, you know, I had this belief that if I did talk about it, literally it felt like this big hole would open up and swallow me because all the things that I believed about myself, that it was my fault, the shame, everything would be true. And that was just, man, it just it, for a time, that felt too big um, until I did m make that decision to talk to someone. So what type of person should they talk to? Yeah, it's funny. You know, we often find that people have been through a traumatic event, become really hypersensitive. So they're watching everybody and, you know, trying to suss people out. I, I chose someone that I, I could see you know, was a confidant of other people. I could see he was quite a non-judgmental person. It was a, a lovely guy called Chris that I spoke to first. And, um, and he gave me some really, really good advice. I was very lucky. I was believed by the first person I spoke to. And, and some people sadly aren't. Mm -hmm. And my advice there would be, that's fine. Leave that with that person. Speak to another person. Find someone else. Yeah. Don't stop just yeah. because somebody didn't Absolutely. believe you. And or... it'll, yeah, it will, and it'll feel hurtful and it'll feel raw, but just, boom, yeah. etch a sketch. Next one. Yeah. Keep going until you've got someone that and can And the right person will, will be there and yeah. present themselves. And it did. And I, and I, I ended up speaking to counsellors because ultimately I ended up um, going to the police about, about my my abuse and pressing charges and going down court yes, case and all that yes. side of things. Um, because I'd, that was actually part of my healing process. I'd, I'd kind of hatched this, you know, certain step program of what I was going to do. Um, but after after actually speaking to people, it just, it started to feel less raw. Yeah. You know, those first times really did feel like I just ripped off a Band-Aid and all the, you know, all the hair had come with it. Yeah. Um, and then over time, it became a little bit more like, oh, that did happen. And I could see it from different perspectives. You know, I could see different pathways and, and things that had fueled and actually where, where it all should be. What would you say to parents uh -huh. as far as trying to protect your children uh -huh. from sexual perpetrators? Is there anything? Yeah, there's a couple of simple things. Um, if someone's wanting to spend more time with your children than you are, you've got to be concerned. And concerned on two levels. Do you need to be a more present parent? And why is this person like really pushing themselves in there? Because the unfortunate thing is, is that in some cases, pedophiles are very manipulative, crafty people. They look at befriending the, the wider group so they have more access. And then they look at really trying to pull away the person they're abusing from those connections. Because that's that's what happened to me. So it sounds funny, but but if someone's wanting to spend more time than your child than you are, then then you need to kind of ask yourself those questions as well. And, and I suppose that is a 
bit of a scary fine line mm. when sexual perpetrators can be yeah. known yes. to the family. Well, sadly, in most times, it's, it's more common that a perpetrator is someone the person knows, and this is right through all forms of, of sexual abuse, unfortunately, right through to adults, to children, is 90% of the time the person's actually known to them. Um, and which is really tough for people to deal with. We'd like to think it's the boogeyman down, you know, that's jumping out of the bushes. Um, and that sadly does happen, but it's it's not not the most common way. Right. And um, and also talking, you know, it's and realistic talking with with your loved ones as well. Like talk to your children, you know, be involved in their life. What are they thinking? You know, when my kids were small, I literally used to put a puppet on my hand because I figured out they'd talk to the puppet more than they'd talk to me. And then later on in life, the small things like at night. I, I sit, sit on my kid's bed with them and I go through the day. You know, how were they? And, and you know, every now and then my son goes, Dad, I'm 16, no other person's dad does this. It's like, I'm always going to do this. Did you share with your children about behaviour that wasn't okay? Very much so. Very, yeah, giving, yeah. How I think about that is by doing that, is you give your child a voice. I remember growing up and it's that idea of children were seen and not heard. And you know, respect your elders. You know, be Because that person's older, they're in a point of authority and they know best. Well, sadly, no, they don't. You know, To me, respect, trust, those things are earned. You know, It's from a relationship being formed and yeah. just because that person's older does not mean they get that. So, you know, instilling boundaries, you know, do things make you feel funny? Always making sure that your child knows that they can talk. And the other thing is that I always tell my kids is that um, there's nothing possible that could happen that would make me love them less. I love them unconditionally. Um, no matter whether that be now or years in Beautiful. the future. Like I may be... And that covers a multitude everything. of everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's nothing, you know, I will love you forever. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. Do that, and, yeah. that will ever stop me from loving you. Yeah, because I think on some level, we we trick ourselves into believing that you know that for for me shame people would think less of me so love would leave you know and um and, and people need to know opposite. that no it's exactly it flows and it flows freely we are all leading really busy lives mm -hmm. and i believe everyone mm -hmm. goes through stressful times mm -hmm. when you get stressed mm -hmm. what do you do um breathe breathe is one of my first ones um yeah. just taking that moment um, making things quiet as well. Yes. Yeah. I, so, so stress for me. So I breathe. I try and keep my environment and things around me quite peaceful. Um, I'm quite conscious of what things I am surrounding myself, whether it be social media or those kind of things. You know, small things like I might follow just positive things. You know, I think sometimes we get, it's quite easy to get um, caught up in, you know, these emotional roller coasters that happen around. Um, dance, move, um, Getting out in nature yeah. is another big one as well. Um, what I take into my body, yes. you know, it's, I, th I think all of us really have this inner knowing of what things are good for us. Yes. Um, and I try and listen to that. And the older I've got, with a few extra <laughs> grace, um, it's, um, I, I notice. I'm that. liking the bed, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yes. It's the first time I've grown it. Yeah. It, it makes you, I mean, I, you were blessed with looking very young. Oh, thank you. Yeah, but it's give, it gives you a little bit more of a... I now don't look 12. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's... There's lots of things we can do. Movement is such a big one for me. Yeah. Um, and not just dance. Movement in lots of ways, whether it be going for a walk, yoga, yeah. stretch, yeah. trying to keep my body guessing, yeah. which I think is why dance is good for people um, as, we, as we age as well. Um, but just trying to be good for myself and good to myself and setting my health, well-being and how I feel as a priority. Mm. So what's ahead for you? Oh, gosh. So new project for me um, is I'm calling it Dance for Life. Um, I'm I love be, that. Dance yeah. for Life. Yeah, because I think it's, it's, it's so important. And so I'm going to be starting some online training. It's in its early stages, which I'm quite excited about, but it's I'm going to be doing an online dance fitness-based class. Okay. Yeah, which I'd love you to... You've got so to I could be try. in my living room mm -hmm. and doing it? Absolutely. Just, you know, turn on, so I'm and, going to... And teaching dance, so mm -hmm. couples, 
at home? Yeah. They want to learn the cha-cha-cha or Absolutely. something? Absolutely. So I'm going to do a live, I'm going to keep the live more of a fitness base so everyone can kind of have fun along and then have some pre-recorded clips so people can kind of delve into their favourite styles and learn more of each of those, whether it be a bit of Latin, a bit of ballroom, cool. maybe a bit of, you know, salsa. Oh, I can't wait for this. Oh, cool. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. So... I just want to finish off with a little story. I want to share a story about you, Aaron. Um, my husband, Marty, died in 2016. And we had his funeral. Mm. And then I invited a few friends and family back to my home. And it ended up being a bit of a night. And yeah. it got to midnight and slowly the last people were leaving. And I turned around. And this one was still there. And I said to Aaron, I said, oh, I said, Aaron, why are you still here? And you said to me, I'm here for you. I'm, I can be here for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And it was in that moment I realized that Aaron had been just following me around at, at, after the funeral and keeping an eye on me. And it was in that moment that I just thought, what a beautiful friend you are. And you were there for me to help me because you knew how yeah. hard that was. Yeah. Um, and I'm just so blessed that 13 years after that first meeting at Dancing with the Stars, mm -hmm. we do indeed have a really beautiful friendship. Yeah. And I'm so grateful yeah, for that. For that, Well, we are. he's the brother I never had. I've always said it, the mm -hmm. brother I never had. So thank you so much for being part of the gift. Oh, pleasure. Um, and thank you for watching this episode. Mm -hmm. The gift is about sharing our gifts. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, this is about inspiring people. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Namaste.